Welcome to Pipe to Podband Podcast, the premier Podband Podcast. <laughs> Whatever. That was close. That was the flip of last time. <laughs> that was good. Uh, hello again, and welcome back. Because you were here last week too, and if you're not, if you didn't listen to last week's episode, go back and listen to it. It's Real great story. We have Chris Hasek here, who is the pipe major of the Mesa Caledonian Pipe Band, our band. And we're kind of celebrating our uh, 40th anniversary as a band because this year has just nothing went as planned and we kind of almost forgot about it. (laughs) So, yay! We're going to, oh, by the way, our editor and producer and all the things that he does, Alex, uh, is going to put some fancy celebration graphics on the screen if you're watching the video on patreon.com slash podbandpipecast. And if you're not watching it, you're just listening it, well, that's, that's fine too. But if you subscribe for the low, low price of $5 per month plus tax, um, <laughs> you can see these fancy celebration anniversary effects and all of our other videos and he does a great job with the video editing so check it out that's my favorite (laughs) that's a good plug (laughs) so we are back here uh like i said celebrating 40 years which is a good amount of time for a band you know for i mean for any organization for a pipe band nonetheless um and we're gonna talk to our pipe major, who is also one of the founders of the band, as you know from listening to last week's episode, about you know some of the the challenges of of that he's encountered the past forty years, some of the things the band's worked through. How does he still want to do this after forty years? <laughs> and it's going to be a good time. Yeah. So. You know what they say, hindsight is 2020. Um, after being a pipe major for 40 years, what is one piece of advice you wish you could give your younger self? Well, <clears throat> some, sometimes I, I feel like I've had 40 years of experience, and sometimes I wonder if it's only been one year 40 times. <laughs> But, but I think I, I do think I've learned a lot. When I look back, there certainly are things that, that I probably could have done better, probably lots of things. Uh, but I, you know, when I, as I thought back, I, I don't think there's anything I would have done differently given the circumstances that we were working with uh, over the years. Uh, I was learning to manage a band as well as to lead the band. And those are two different things, they really are. Um, and, and so that was part of it. I guess if I had one thing that I would have tried to do more of, and that's earlier on start to learn as much as I could about fundraising, because that's it's, it's critical. I I tell people that running a pipe band successfully is like running a a, a race car team. If you can have the best car in the world, but if you don't have the right pit crew and you don't have the funding for the all the things that you need, <clears throat> all the tires, different kinds of tires, and everything else, you aren't going to be successful. And, and that's true with pipe bands. If you don't have the funding to at least be a, comp, a competitive pipe band, it takes funding for you know, all kinds of things. So that's probably what I would have tried to do differently or better, is, is learn more about grants, learn more about fundraising sources, and fundraising activities you can do. And, you know, I've been lucky because I've had some really bright people around in the band who could come up with some of these ideas and, and 
you know, and, and most of them work. Yeah, I think that's always also it's always evolving, right? Like how you raised funds in 2019 is different than how you did it in 1999, you know? Well, and, and then 2020 happens and that's a whole other, other burden. But So um, speaking of that, so last episode, we talked a little bit about the challenges that you faced starting the band. Um, over the past 40 years of actually running the band, what are some challenges that you and the band encountered and how did you overcome them? Well, <clears throat> the first one is still funding. Um, you know, as our goals have gotten higher and higher and higher, it's taken more funding. Like we started going to Scotland in 2001 and we made four trips and then funding kind of dropped off for a period of time and, you know, so we didn't get back until 2019. But um, all in all, that's, that's, that's a constant challenge, whether it was from the beginning or whether it's continuing. Um, another challenge has been trying to maintain a stable core of pipers and drummers. I mean, life interferes. With me, the pipe band is something a lot greater than a hobby. Collecting stamps is a hobby. Uh, but for some people, it's an avocation. And for me, pipe bands is an avocation. Uh, it's, my wife says I, I work primarily to fund all the things I want to do with the pipe band. <laughs> And she's probably right. Um, but people move away and, and other, you know, for different reasons. And some, you know, we're trying to teach and recruiting new students is, continues to be a challenge. We've got some young people in the band, but, but we want to get more. But finding those people and them having the interest and then following through, uh, that's a challenge and to keep that keep that growing and keep that that coming from below it's hard like i said it's harder for us than in some areas to just reach out and, and pull some people in um or come play with us this year or something like that that's a lot more more difficult for us in in the arizona environment because there aren't many and the ones that are here are fairly well attached to their groups and we wouldn't want to change that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of trying to continue to grow from within. That's a challenge. And then um, 2020's added a whole new level of challenges just in terms of keeping the band together and keeping this moving forward and so on. Um, my pipe sergeant, Diane, your mom, my sister, uh, she has really carried the load with that this year, with so getting all the Zoom tasks going and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, we, but just keeping everybody involved in, on some level, it, that's why it was just so great that in November we could actually go out and play some gigs and, and you know get people back into that mode and feel like hey I'm I really am part of the band and and uh, <clears throat> you know we're doing something we're here we are we're playing for you and so that was that was really a, a wonderful thing for us to have happen that that we were able to play those gigs and. and you know, the way the environment is changing even right now, that might not have happened this month. And so it was, it was fortunate. But that's, that's been a real challenge is to keep the band together, keep them motivated, keep them moving forward, trying to find goals that people can, 
can deal with in, in the 2020 COVID environment that we're working around. And I mean, games all around the world have been canceled. And, and everybody's going through the same thing we are. And I've been communicating with, you know, with other pipe majors about what we're doing, how we're trying to handle the challenges and learning how they're doing things and trying to handle the challenges. So it's, it's been, there's been a lot of sharing going on. Can't do it alone. <laughs> oh, I, uh, and the piping community is a, is a relatively small community, the pipe band community. And, and so everybody knows everybody and, and almost everybody in that community is willing to share what their finding works and so on. So what inspires you to keep learning and growing as a piper and a pipe major? It's my love of the music. That's what it is. It's, I mean, I get a, a, a real thrill out of watching some of the younger people in the band grow up to become adults and, and adults that I'm really proud of. And, and uh, you know, watching that happen, that's all really a wonderful part of the band environment that keeps me going. But primarily it's the love of the music that, and the respect for the music and the understanding that, you know, people died to keep this part of our culture alive. Uh, you know, pipers were hanged in the 1700s. And the bagpipe was considered a weapon of war. And, and people died for that music and for that culture. And, and so it's important to me to respect that culture and try to help make that grow. Okay, so there's going to be, hopefully, I imagine there will be, people listening to this episode and the previous episode who are considering either now or sometime in the future starting their own band. Um, or maybe that's been a dream of theirs, or maybe they're kind of in that position right now. What advice do you have, if any, for anyone in that position? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, years ago, I was teaching Do Horn. I was traveling from Phoenix to Albuquerque and staying, and I had an apartment in Albuquerque because I was managing a legal office there as well as one here in Phoenix. And Bill talked me into starting to give him lessons, and then he came to me one day and he said he was going to start a band, and I said, you're absolutely nuts. But he went ahead and I tried to help him and talk to him and he's got a really fine, respectable, great, great core band. They won the world in grade four, won the world championship uh, in 1997. I, and I was the first person he called, not even his mom or his sister or anybody. I was the first person he called to tell me that they won. I was so excited. <laughs> but if, you, if you're going to start a band, the first thing you have to be is you have to be comfortable with who you are and not be afraid to admit that you don't know everything. I've seen a lot of pipe makers that had a lot of trouble because if they, it seemed like if they felt they didn't, they didn't know something, then, then they were going to lose control or lose prestige, whatever. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to bring people in to help you. You know, uh, we still, to the extent we can, you know, before 2020 hit, we've been regularly bringing people in. We've had Jack Lee, we've had Bruce Gandy, uh, Ed Best. Uh, there's so many of them out there. Reed Maxwell's out there that's teaching bands all over and so on. Uh, Terry Lee, you can just go on and on with the, the people who really, really have done it, first of all, and 
are willing to share. They're all willing to share that, what they've learned. And, and so you get that instruction in to help you become a better partner of you and help the band become better. And, and second, money, financing, I've been saying this all along, um, you know, line up financing, find people who know about fundraising, get them involved and, and then, you know, budget and work, try and work within a budget. Uh, you know, we have meetings and here with our executive committee and we go through the budget and what we're doing and we talk about fundraising activities and we have people who have experience in writing grants and things like that. And, you know, for every 10 they write, maybe they get one sniff. Uh, it's, it's difficult fundraising. And, and so you got to do a lot of it on your own and be creative. Um, I guess next, you, you have to be patient. And remember, you know, you have to be, an, as a pipe major, you have to be an instructor, you have to be a mentor, you have to be a friend, you have to be a counselor, you have to be a manager. And, and you're dealing with people who want to succeed. If, if they don't want to succeed, then you don't want them anyways. But if you're dealing with people who want to succeed and want to get better, uh, you have to respect them and you have to respect what what they can do and how fast they can do it. So you need you need the patience. But but you're managing a bunch of volunteers. You need to make it fun. You need to make it a challenge at the same time. If you're not doing that, people are gonna leave. Um, because it takes time and it takes money even to be a, a member. And and if they're not having fun, if they can't justify what they're learning and can't justify the fun they're having, they can't justify spending the money. So, so it's those are important things. Uh, you need to respect the music. Uh, play music you can play well. I can tell you is you know I've, I've been a judge as a judge for many years. And I can tell you that judges would rather hear Scotland the Brave play well with good sound than they would Highland Wedding play badly with bad sound and bad execution. You know, uh, I, I don't know a judge that would, would say anything other than that. Um, so respect the music and play what you can play well. Don't, but that doesn't mean you don't find the challenge. But but you have to monitor that. You have to, you know, guide that and take it in steps. You don't you don't reach for the moon and get to the highest mountain where you can make that reach. You have to get up a bunch of other hills too. And, and so, and that takes patience. Um, you have to pay attention to the details, all the details. Not, not the, big, that the big picture and the ideas and important presentation, but it's the details that make that happen. And, you know, details of stuff, execution. Uh, you know, with the technology, there is no excuse for a band to grow sound bad. But, but it happens over and over and over. Okay. Uh, you know, details of sound, execution, expression, your overall presentation. But d details in, in your marching in your department, their uniforms, if they're, they're smart and they're pressed and they're cleaned and they're, you know, they aren't hung on somebody's floor. Um, people you're going to be playing in front of, they may not know all of the precise details of the execution, but all of them will know the difference between noise and music, number one. And number two, <clears throat> they've been watching marching bands since they were kids. 
they know what a good marching band looks like and they equate that to a pipe band. And so you better look smart and sharp or they'll think you guys don't know what you're doing. So, you know, that's the pub what the public see. And so every time you, your people are going out, they need to remember they're representing the band and they need to look like the band and respect the band and the band uniform and, and that kind of thing. Um, so pay attention to details. And then, you know, the last thing I, I've said before, you need to challenge them, but, but keep the goals attainable. You know, work in steps and we attain this goal and we're doing this well. All right, let's try this. Let's spread our wings a little bit. Let's move to this kind of music and try and play that a little better and so on. Um, you know, when, when I was judging again, over and over and over, I would hear bands coming up playing music that was way beyond what they were capable of playing at that time. They might like the music, but it was beyond what they could play. And, you know, and I've even been guilty of that. I've, I've found tunes, you know, that we tried to play and no, that's not working and you've got to scrap it and back it up and ratchet it back. Um, kind of thing, because you have to, you want your people to succeed, so don't set them up to fail. And, and so, uh, you know, challenge, but keep the goals attainable. I guess that, that, that's the advice I'd be giving. That's a lot of good advice. Yeah. Take notes, people listening. <laughs> Uh, do you have any, any advice for anyone lacking motivation right now with their band or their piping career? That's, this is a really hard problem right now where everybody's locked up in their house has been for months and, you know, I guess I would be saying try to remember why you wanted to learn in the first place. You know, Hopefully it was for the love of the music. Bring that joy back into your life. Uh, get to work and, and you can do it. I know that's what, when Jim talked me back into playing after I hadn't played for about 10 years, um, that's what got me going. God, I love how these pipes are sounding, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and so I did some playing on my own to start with before I, I wanted to make sure I was ready to play in a band. And and when I got going, I mean, I just, that's what brought me back was the love of the music. And if, you, if you've been able to do that, you know, the, I think is one of the things I can do one of the only things I can do where I can put the rest of the world out of my head. And to, and to play well, you have to be that focused on what you're doing. You know, I can't be sitting there on an attorney. I can't be trying to play pipe and think about a case that I've got pending. You know, it doesn't work. I can't do justice to either one. So, but when I'm playing my part, everything else goes out of my head and I'm just there in the sound and the music and, and you know, that's the thing that you have to find if you want, want to really enjoy that in your life, do it. Just do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> we had an episode, um, for those of you that may not have seen it, that was about motivation just a couple weeks ago. And it was just, you just got to do it. Just do it. <laughs> that joke, if you listen to the episode, it's, it's not a joke. I mean, you do just have to do it. Well, that's but. what I said. Let's do it. <laughs> so, all right. Talking about joy in your piping, in your pipe band career. Um, 
and you've had a long piping career. So we always ask people, what is your most memorable pipe band moment? But I know you may have a couple. So what is, what are some of your most memorable pipe band moments? Wow. Um, well, I have to say in the world championships in Glasgow, realizing I'm here. Oh my God, it's happening. You know, uh, that's one. That same trip, we played a concert at Sterling Castle. And playing there with the walls around you, we were playing there in the daytime. Um, it was like, oh my God, I am playing pipes where Robert the Bruce was. You know, things like that. It just awe me. I'm, I'm like, oh my God. Um, you know, playing there again, it, uh, you guys will remember how magic it was playing at Sterling Castle in 2019. We were there at night. We were, there were no tourists. There was just a group we were playing for, and we were the only people in the, in the castle. And fireworks going off behind us as we're playing. And, and, I mean, it, it was just a magic experience for me, again, knowing the history and knowing the, you know how much I respect the culture and, and the music and so on. It was just a magic experience for me. Um, I hope it was for you guys. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, for sure. It was something that I, it's one of those things you, you never know. You never expect to do that and you never expect to do it again. <laughs> exactly. It, it just, like I say, to me, it was magic. And, and I was there with my family doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our, our family, we, we grew our family in Scotland, you know, Craig Martin became a member of our band family for that for that trip, and that was wonderful. Those are the, the greatest joy I have seen, rather than an event, has been the growth of the band. Oh, you know, from where we've come from to where we are now, and the growth of the people. Seeing, you know, Dave was was a teenager when he was drumming and and seeing what he's become and the kind of, you know, not just the kind of drummer, but the kind of person he became and, and watching, you know, I, I was, uh, Alex and Adela grow up in the band and and all of a sudden they're so, they're so successful and I'm just, that gives me so much joy. I can't begin to tell you those kinds of things and the, the relationship with all the people that I have. Definitely no family like your pipe band family. And I think we've said that a few times, but it's just, it's so true. <laughs> and, and it's really true throughout the pipe band community. Um, there are so many, you know, like any family, any community, okay, there's, there's some cousins that maybe you don't want to have to see too much and stuff like that. <laughs> but, but at the same time, most of the people you absolutely love and they, they love you back and they share with you anything they could just like you would with them. Uh, it's a competitive field, but it's, but it's a friendly competitive field for the most part. And, and, you know, that's that's a joy that I experience. I, I love going to the games just to see the people in the other bands and talk to them about how they're doing and so on. And, and like I said, I you know, I've been in contact with a number of other bands about how they're dealing with 2020 and how, you know, how, and sharing with them how we're trying to deal with 2020 and, and so on. It's, it's that kind of a close community that I, I really treasure. And, and the band family I'm here at present. Yeah, it's nice. It's all sentimental. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
So what are you most looking forward to about Pipe Band in the next couple of years? I want to continue to see our band grow. I'm excited to see all of the creativity that's going on in pipe bands here and around the world. That's exciting to me. Um, I'm, uh, I haven't thrown this out to our executive committee yet, but, but, uh, I want us to be planning to go to Scotland in 2022. Uh, we'll be ready. And we'll be a lot more ready than we were in 2019. 2019, but you know, we were, we were ready, but it was kind of just like, you got to go sometime. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was, and we were we learned so much, and, and I'm, every time I've gone to Scotland, I've learned so much. And, you know, we've had times when we placed pretty high in the grade. Uh, you know, we were fourth in, in 2007. So, at the world. So, it's, it's, uh, it's been a learning experience, so whether we've done well or done not so well, it, it's been a tremendous learning experience, and that's what our band is about. And, and so I'm going to be strongly suggesting to our executive committee that we consider uh, planning for Scotland in 2022. So I'm looking forward to that. By then, the world will be back to normal, hopefully. <laughs> Ish. Hopefully, flights will still be vacant. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, no one wants to fly to do things, so it's cheaper for us to go places. <laughs> yeah. That is the downside to, uh, one downside to, living in Arizona and doing pipe band things is yeah, there's stuff close by, but you also, you want to do those bucket list trips, you know? And yeah, well, everywhere we have to go to compete, you know, I mean, everywhere well, for us to compete, we have to go places. Mm -hmm. and, and so I want to see us back in Scotland in 2022. I want to be back at the European Championship. That was a great championships, by the way, because I want—I remember going to the Worlds in 2007 when I was a performing member, um, and we competed there and, and did well. But um, as the you know, when I was in the Grade Four band, but the other championships, just I'm telling you, give them a try because they're 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 really fun. <laughs> well, you have the time to win embrace what's going on where the world is just crazy mm -hmm. and and the welcome that we get when we go to some of those other contests is really amazing you know so i i want to duplicate the trip we did in 2019 personally yeah i like that i loved it but it was a brutal place physically but <laughs> I could work out in. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. And for anyone who's listening who doesn't, who hasn't heard our episode um, on, or a couple of episodes, I believe, on our Scotland trip last year, just go back and, and look there. We talked about how we did it, what we did, why we did it, and it was a lot of fun. So that's another shameless plug. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a marketer. That's what I do. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for you today. Um, but, and we said this before we started our, our recording session that you've got, I don't want to be rude about this, but 60 years, <laughs> 60 years basically of um, 
piping and pipe band experience. And if there's anyone out there that has questions that they would want to ask Chris um, about the band or about being a pipe major or piping in general, first of all, you can reach out to um, our Mesa Caledonian Pipe Band Facebook page. He is an admin on that page. And if you say, you know, hey, I want to ask Chris a question, then that's he'll he'll see it probably. Um, <laughs> And we can also bring him back for future episodes, and we probably will at some point because there's just so much to talk about. We can't get only two episodes of <laughs> of um, and call it good. So, uh, yeah, let us know if you want to hear more from him on a particular topic. Uh, and let us know how your band is doing during the pandemic and how you're handling this and just how you – Let's know about your day. How's it going? What would you have for lunch? Are you eating? Do you drink enough water? Do that. Go drink some water. <laughs> That's important. Drink plenty of water. Yes. And play your pipes and drums. Let's do it. Just do it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again uh, for being on the show. And this has been really great. And we hope that you all listening enjoyed it. So... See you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this show, then support us on Patreon for exclusive content, as well as the video of us recording this. We'll have special exercises we'll be writing, as well as tips and tricks with tenor drumming and other instruments to come. Um, Subscribe to us on YouTube for some tenor tutorials and possibly other tutorials later on. Um, And like us on Facebook at Podband Pipecast.